Oh, and so this Hello, one. and it's time for Jackson to introduce this episode. Welcome to this week's episode of the official podcast where four men sit around and talk about penises. Kai, it's your turn to introduce the episode. <laughs> and your penis. Yeah, what's its name? How big is your oh, penis? Talking about penises, we have a lot to talk about. This is episode 37, so this one comes up first, right? So this is... You will be listening to this on Thursday, Monday, if you have early access, that, which means hopefully we will have overthrown the firebenders using that eclipse. We will talk about another Hollywood phony being exposed as a Hollywood phony shocker. It turns out Joss Whedon, the feminist icon, was cheating on his wife for over a decade. And then Andrew will tell us about his biggest, best movie idea. T- take it away, guys. That was fucking great. What's the fastest? What's the fastest you guys have ever driven in a car? Uh, one hundred and two. Jackson, I don't have a driver's license. Wow, so zero. zero. Wait, really? <laughs> I have no fucking idea. Yeah. Wait, Kai, do you have a driver's license? Yeah, but I, I don't know how fast I've driven. I'm not a NASCAR driver. I don't jot down my high score after every <laughs> new record. <laughs> <laughs> it's not something I, I even really thought about. It's I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like something even most people do, other than the kind that buy the fastest cars and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, and take the muffler off, so it just sounds like the, the car is shitting itself really loudly. Yeah, I love. Well, not only that, I don't get why even people. bother buying cars like that when you're never gonna take them to a track or really ever go that fast with them. Yeah, because they're nerds. Wait, but Jackson, this this has opened up an interesting can of worms, in my opinion. You don't have a license. Really what? What do you use for identification then for like on Twitch and stuff? Because I know you have to present ID. Do you use passport? Mm, no, they've never asked me for anything like that. Or if they have, I just took a photo of my license that's expired. Wait a minute. I th- uh, did you not just in the last episode say that your license has you at five? Yeah, 11? wait. Yeah, well, yeah. no, it's an expired license. That's what I mean. It was from like four years ago. Well, uh, get it renewed. So I do have a driver's license. It's just expired, so I don't drive. But and you've never driven a car. Well, I have, just, like, during the whole learning process. <laughs> so, wait, but, you, you know. yeah, when did it expire? <laughs> did you just keep going, I should really take care of that at some point? No, I just don't drive. I just don't like driving. Wait, oh, well, hold on. All those times you've... Wait, wait, what the fuck? Hold on, so you don't... You haven't, <laughs> you, dri- about? you haven't driven since you took the driver's test? Well, no, I've driven after that. It's just... Uh... I don't know, it's just expired, it's kind of illegal. Well, th- how many times have you driven? Can you count how many times you have driven a vehicle? <laughs> I can, why, I can why count Why are you so hands. fervent about this? Yeah, yeah Charlie, did you get into a car accident well, no. recently or something? Because <laughs> the amount of times I've messaged Jackson, he's like, yeah, I'm at the, I'm at the mall, I'm at, I'm at my girlfriend's. Public here. transport. Yeah, Charlie, what you forget oh, is right. that other places besides America have actually good, usable public you're, transport. You're absolutely right, I didn't take that into account. I thought it was all like Tampa, where the only public transport is a piggyback ride on a homeless man. That makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. <laughs> How bad is the infrastructure in America that you didn't even consider buses and stuff? Oh, they, they don't have America them in Tampa. Got fu- yeah, America got fucked by cars. There's an entire history that you can read where the automobile industry completely fucked America's public transportation. Yeah, uh, and that's a hundred percent accurate. Yeah, public yep. transport in Tampa is non-existent. Now, Uber is a godsend. That's the only public transport we have is Uber. Yep. It it honestly like to fuck like in when it was coming up. I think it was in the forties and fifties or something. Literally, they were car companies were like, "We're getting fucked by all these buses and trolleys and all this public transport shit. How do we sell more cars?" And they lobbied Congress and did all these bullshit rules and all this stuff. And eventually, they warped it into being really car dependent. Yeah. It's complete and utter horseshit because cars in general suck. I mean, th- hey, no. Well, no, think no. Cars fucking suck. Honest to God, every place on Earth should have massive public transport and cars should be used sparingly in a perfect world. I don't like cars. Cars are terrible. I hate them. Think about it this way. You can get, what, 50 people on a big bus? Uh, let's be conservative. 30? Mm-hmm. If all of them are transporting to work on... 30 big people on a bus. Yes, 30 large round men on a bus. 25 if they're eating. 30 Americans. 30 normal Americans on a bus. <laughs> so think about it this way. If they're all commuting to work and they're all going by themselves, you just took 25, 30 cars off the road. For one bus. And 30 fat people but, on the road. Yeah, no, right. I, I hate it too. I hate cars. I hate loud cars. Yeah. Yeah. Cars are fucking I, terrible. I don't get the point. They're, honest to God, horrible Other things. Other than I get headaches announcing that you have a small dick. Why? Why, why, <laughs> why do that? Why wake up the whole neighborhood at 4 a.m.? What is wrong with you? Yeah. 
I like how every time you bring that up, it's always directed at that one guy, and I hope one day he sees it. And he... It's not one guy, it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a group of people. This is not a, just, I have, I don't have an arch nemesis. No. <laughs> it's the store it, It's these people who love loud cars, and I don't get why. Why? I just... I, I can't. I can't understand. Did no one ever hug you? What is it your makes problem? their PP feel larger? It's the same reason they do illegal street races and shit even like that. Even women don't care, though. Even women get the joke. Like even women know the cliche joke of "ha, big car, small dick." Like even they're giggling to themselves about what a loser you are. Not Who over wants here. Pressing at four a.m. There's a lot of chicks over here that That's love sick. cars. Well, yeah, it's I one mean, thing to I love mean, even cars. If they make... Well, mm-hmm. even if they make a joke, they, there's still that huge group that, of people, men and women, that'll swoon if you rev your engine yeah. in the right way. Men will swoon. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. And those, I think they should be executed. <laughs> <laughs> Via car. You run them over with the loudest engine so people watch. Oh my god. He... I don't know. Just stick the muffler in their ears and then just rev it up oh, until they bleed out of that their That sounds horrible. Orifices. That's mean. That's one way to go out, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, on, on the subject of loud cars and all that shit, we, I mean, I guess with the people who play super loud music when they're rolling, I get when they're rolling through with, like, music because they want to show off and be like, look at me with my cool sound system and all that. This happened to me today, and it baffles me. Why do people do that with their windows up? <laughs> where where you can literally hear the song at, like, a comfortable distance, like, 20 feet away. You can hear the exact tune they're listening to because it's so monstrously loud that it's bleeding through their entire vehicle. I'm wondering how the fuck they're not deaf. People like loud music. Yeah. Yeah. No, but this is this is painful decibel levels if you were in that car, without a doubt. And they just Maybe roll they like Yeah, that. but after a while, your ears get adjusted. Especially if most people, as they age, they get hearing loss. Plus, if you keep listening to loud music, you, you just make it worse. And did you guys know that our ears actually have muscles that kind of contract once you start listening to loud music for several minutes? Okay, that I did not know. <laughs> that's why the that's first thing when you wake up what Andrew knows <laughs> <laughs> I knew all of all of human history and knowledge except for that one fact <laughs> the ear muscles that is, that is foreign territory for Andrew yeah I, I understood the whole getting used oh, well. to a loud sound as you listen to it but I, I'm just talking like this guy hired an entire symphony to cram into his SUV <laughs> because it was just so uproariously loud, loud I don't it, it had to be at past pain threshold I don't know how you could do it well, he, knows, he could man. be yeah. deaf. The person I, could be deaf and he's just so, using so he's the vibrations. just fucking with people. No, no he's, he's fe- using the vibrations. <laughs> yeah, he's feeling like the music. Like baby driver. Uh, uh. He's baby <laughs> driver. <laughs> I need the loudest. So he goes to Best Buy and he pulls his car in there and he goes, "I need the loudest, most bumping sound system you got." And they're like, "Well, we got the new models in stock." And he goes, "What?" But he can't hear what they're saying. Damn, well, damn, it. damn it, Jackson. <laughs> Well, baby driver wasn't deaf. He just had a bit of a ring in his ear. Yeah, tinnitus. It was trying to drown out. His muscles were spasming. <laughs> he went to one too many concerts. <laughs> they didn't know how to contract properly. <laughs> what is tinnitus? It, that's like, I, I, I hear ringing in my ears all the time as well, but I don't. Th- it's not overwhelming or anything like that. You then probably it's... do still have it. Yeah, yeah, if it's consistent and doesn't stop, tinnitus. If it does stop, normal. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sweet. Normal, but you still don't want to... You probably don't want to listen to stuff too loud. Yeah, you don't want to drown it out or anything. Yeah. You don't want to make a exciting heist movie based off that premise. <laughs> exciting. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, I can't talk about that movie. <laughs> that too. I only talk about it in one sentence, though. All right, one sentence. Uh, speaking Long. of speaking of fast car chase drives and, and fast cars, titties, pussy kicking ass. Fast y- cars. Y- you don't want to be you don't want to be late to a, a pussy eating ass kicking competition. Thanks to the movement watches, you'll never be late. It, the value of the watches is probably worth more than the bank you're robbing. Tell them about it, Andrew. So, movement <laughs> watches is founded on the belief that style should not break the bank. These are classic designed, quality constructed, and minimalistly styled amazing watches. As a man who wears a movement watch on my actual wrist... I do too. I think they're snazzy watches. There have been over 1 million watches sold in over 160 countries. I wasn't even aware that many countries existed on Earth. And now I know that over that amount, at least have one MVMT watch. 
someone in Rwanda is looking pretty dead. Oh man, someone in Serbia right now is probably starving to death and fighting off amazing government oppression, but he looks at his wrist and he just feels that warm glow because he knows that his movement watch is the shining beacon it's of light. Time. It's time for him to rise. <laughs> it's time for revenge. <laughs> Cuz he he has a sparkling brand new movement watch. All right, so move, movement is little like us, apparently. They were founded by two guys in their bedrooms because they thought, hey, I don't want to pay for expensive watches. Fuck that That's shit. exactly how this podcast so we're just gonna started. Make our... We didn't want to pay for expensive watches, so we made a podcast. Yeah, so we one day get sponsored by Movement, whose watches are pretty damn cheap. They yeah. start from 100 bucks, 95. and, you, you know, they... They pretty much just figure, hey, we can take out the middleman because if you go to a mall, like uh, Jackson does with his bus, and then you go to a watch shop or whatever, they can cost like hundreds of dollars because there's the middleman, the guy in the watch shop taking a cut. Shell- selling you that shit. Yeah, that guy really yeah, gouges taking his cut. you. Movement decided, hey, you know what, we can just skip the middleman, we'll just sell this stuff online, and they did, and they've been selling millions of them, and they all have nice designs, they look slick, they look modern, and they tell time, most importantly. And now you can go to movement, that's spelled M-V-M-T dot com slash official, that's without all the letters, M-V-M-T dot com slash official, and you get 15% off any watch. They're cheap already, not the now watch. you're getting them you, for even cheaper. You get 15% off the price of the watch, Not they won't take any of your watch away from you. You'll get <laughs> exactly. the entire It'll watch. It'll still have all the numbers on it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not like Willy Wonka's <laughs> thinking room where half of everything is missing. It's a full watch that works yeah. and it's beautiful. All numbers, 1 they to 12, slick. all on the watch. I, I think I actually took like five days deciding on which watch I wanted yeah. and Jackson was starting to get annoyed with me. But you can get them now at mvmt.com slash official. That's two M's, one V, one T, and all the official boys. <laughs> the the watch, it's got a clean design. I mean, I've I've put them on. I've gotten some compliments. I think people I think, like that watch. Uh, yeah, yeah. And now, as Charlie awkwardly stumbles, I mean, I was gonna, I, I was, I thought you were gonna keep going for for no reason. Kaya really nailed it. Except Charlie. for the, you know, the fact that it's now time to step up your watch game. Yeah, Charlie, join the movement, please. Yeah, come on, Charlie. <laughs> so speaking, sorry, sounded like a just, it made you sound like a transformer with a dumb gimmick. <laughs> I'm Clock Tower Ben Former. Clock Tower Ben. Time to tell the time. <laughs> Why is his name Clock Tower Ben? Why can't it just be Ben? <laughs> it's his full title. Mm, Hello, my name is because Clock little Tower kids Ben. Don't know, I don't know. The little kids don't know what the Big Bang is. Big Ben? The Big, big Bang. Fuck. <laughs> they love the Big Gosh, Bang Theory. <laughs> oh, Featuring yeah, lovable do. characters like Sheldon, Phlebas, and Clock Tower Ben. And mini Sheldon, young Sheldon, oh, yeah, whatever that's they a call thing, that abomination it? now. That happened, yeah. didn't it? When is it's it out? Has you, it been released or is it still in pre-production? What are you talking about? I have no idea. There's a new TV series so based it, on Sheldon being young and autistic. Oh lord. Yeah. Well, that's fun. That's actually completely cr- true. And his neighbor Penny still has giant titties. Oh really? Yeah, he suckles up on them. Well wait, how old is how old are they <laughs> in the show? Wouldn't she be like six? She's still got giant titties. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, that doesn't well, stop the facts, Andrew. It. Yeah, it doesn't stop the facts. Yeah. Alright, well, my mistake. She's born like it. <laughs> we know why she got the role. She was born it's like to Kentai. be it. I'm a big fan of her work. Alright. <laughs> anyway, speaking of titties, Joss Whedon. You asshole, you. You little dick, you got caught, didn't you? His wife today. Well, damn it, we need to stop releasing this so <laughs> late because it's always... <laughs> It's difficult to nail the drama as it's still hot. It's fine. Joss Whedon's wife just came out saying that he should not be getting all those feminist awards and that he's a hypocrite because apparently he's been cheating for 15 years. Oh, damn. I thought she was actually going to nail him and say he's a mediocre director that's incredibly overhyped. But please, keep going. 15 years? That too. That surpasses cheating. Yeah, that's... Apparently, (laughs) since... Since uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, apparently he's been fucking chicks on sets, just fans... Random girls, Jesus. actresses. God damn, Josh. Doesn't, doesn't he look like a thumb? Sorry, what? Jackson, does go ahead. Fuck, well, all right. Does he fuck his wife still? Oh no, they're divorced. Oh well. Then. I assume she's now estranged and angry at him. That's why she's coming forward. How long have they and been I divorced? That as we, I don't know. But I assume that as we're speaking. Joss is penning his apology letter, mm. by which I mean his PR team is ghostwriting it for him as he's fucking another intern, probably. Good for you, you know, Joss. 
You know what's going to happen? Yeah. The uh, the third Avengers movie, or what the fuck is... Is he doing the Justice, Justice League, League or something? Yeah. No. So the Justice yeah, League movie Justice is going to come out, and there's going to be a scene where, like, I don't know, Batman and Green Lantern are dicking around at the console, and Batman's doing some snooping, and Green Lantern's going to be like, Batman, I heard that, you know, you cheated on Talia al Ghul, and he's going to be like, that's right, Green Lantern. Sometimes it's okay to cheat on your spouse. <laughs> Talia al Ghul? Yeah, yeah, that's who... That's Batman's lover. You didn't know that? Really? Yeah, yeah it, no, so the no official idea. canon I, I, in uh, Batman... This is the first time I've ever heard so the, Batman the has the official lover. Batman mm-hmm. canon is he falls in love with Talia Ghul, Ra's al Ghul's daughter, and they have a son named Damian Wayne, and he becomes the fifth Robin. Hmm. Yeah, it's... Batman, if you catch up with the actual Wait, comics, uh, has a lot of interesting plot lines that they don't cover but in the movies. It's delved into in the Arkham series as well. That too, yeah. Hmm. I had no idea because in most media and the movies and such, all we get is the implication that he he wants to fuck that cat woman. Yeah. Jeff. Well, they've always had a, a romance and a thing and a fling, but nah, he actually puts his billionaire pee-pee inside of Talia. Hmm. Yeah. And other actresses, including Buffy, I assume. <laughs> Good for you again, Joss. If you're listening to this, yeah. man, come on the podcast. Tell, you how you, tell us how you did it. Is my mom on that list? I'd love to know. Come on, Joss. <laughs> if my mom was... Well, come on and deny it. If my mom fucked Joss Whedon, I wouldn't be mad. <laughs> I'd give her a high five. I'd be impressed. I'd say me next. I'd, I'd hope she still has the connection so I can invite him on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd hope the DNA matched so I could sue him. <laughs> mom, hold still. I gotta get this cotton swab real quick. Stop squirming, Mom, please. It's my future. Please. Oh, fuck. I know nothing about Joss Whedon. I only knew that he made mediocre movies. I didn't think he was that well, it's big, just, really. It's incredibly funny because he likes to pride himself as a feminist icon. He even apparently told his wife that... <laughs> this is the classic <laughs> thing we all of us hear. It's, he told her, No, oh, I only hang around women because I love... You know, I just respect women so much. So- and I get along with them better. Which is the number one bimbo slut thing someone will tell you is, Oh yeah, I hang around guys, I just get along with them better. So did, he, did his wife catch him like balls deep in one of the Buffy extras? And he's like, I'm doing this for women everywhere! <laughs> this one's for feminism. You should be proud of me. <laughs> Women's rights! So oh yeah, flip over, baby. This loads for you. Apparently, he was writing his wife letters of apologies, like, "Yeah, I cheated on you, but I, I never wanted to be with anyone other than you." Uh, how deep do you think? So how, th- how deep do you think Hollywood cover-ups go? Because I would love for him to be writing those letters, and while maybe all the press and lawyers and whatever put them out as apology letters, they actually say, "Like, ha 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 ha, you stupid slut! Look what I did! I'm Joss <laughs> Whedon. Fuck you! I got away well, with there's it." There's actually, at as deep as that goes, there's actually good reason to think there's a active pedophile ring in Hollywood. Oh, there! Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, there's a whole documentary on it, it I was going to send you. Yeah. <laughs> they heard, you, Joss Whedon heard you. Yeah, they, you, they're getting busted right now. <laughs> Run! <laughs> you don't joke about Whedon. Oh, yeah, I mean it. I guess he couldn't cover up the wrath of a angry woman. <laughs> yeah. Good for her. Fuck that guy. Yeah. I mean, Hollywood's a business at the end of the day. Well, as I much mean, as they're is it's, an art form there. It's uh, it was much a business decision to cheat on it. Was <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> it was just good business. <laughs> it would look great on our figures, sir. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean as much it. as there is a layer of art and <laughs> filmmaking there, Hollywood at the end of the day is still a bunch of very powerful and money wealthy people making big studio based decisions. I, I just don't understand. It, it, it's, yeah, yeah, that's connect. I mean, that's 100% right, but why does pedophilia always have to be involved? It's because they're powerful. Why does it have to be with children, too? I don't get it. Charlie, when you have that much money, real know. pussy doesn't do it for you anymore. You got, you, well, ch- hey, children's still You gotta find pussies. dangerous pussy. There could be some truth to that, Andrew. I, I, that's, I mean, yeah. If you can't have anything, you know, then I guess you kind of want to start doing stuff you can't have. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I completely agree with that. It's the people who... It's a reason fetishes exist. It's, it's a big part of the whole thing where you get bored with what you have and if they can just get pussy on the rig and don't even care then what excites they're them they're bad know? people they're bad fucking people oh of course god these assholes. absolutely <sighs> well we can sw- we can switch gears here and talk about uh talk about comic books uh, has anyone read a comic book i uh, yeah, no. i have a bunch nerd <laughs> andrew has comic books ah you got me Busted. Hey, he won't be able to cheat on anyone 
Are they laminated to you, dork? Yeah, they're in my they're in my display case. I have Spider Man number fourteen, <laughs> the first appearance of the Green Goblin. Uh, well, does it have Raja Labaga Al Ghul, <laughs> Batman's love interest <laughs> his, from Bollywood, his disowned step nephew? <laughs> <laughs> Lava Gob, come here. And his only the only words he can say are Blaba Gob. Lava Lava. There's a, there's a scene where Batman and Robin are being lowered into a vat of acid by the Joker, and he's laughing his head off, and then he gets conked in the head, and they go, It's Blaba Gob, and he goes, Blaba Gob cuts the rope down and saves him. I'd watch that. Sounds like sloth no, going too far. <laughs> You're right. It is going too far, Jackson. That's why it's been greenlit for a cinematic universe. <laughs> Actually, speaking of cinematic universe, what? really? Well, I was just gonna say, have you guys been keeping up with the dark universe developments ever since the Mummy ate shit? <laughs> God no. Ooh, ooh, actually I'm yes, yes. No, to... I, I, uh, there's something coming out. Fuck, it's uh, King Kong versus Godzilla, right? <laughs> yeah. And they've got it, it. Apparently, it's gonna have a definitive winner because you know how those versus movies always they, like they always end with both characters still surviving or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like they take the pussy rat out so that, that the studios cool. can keep their mm -hmm. keep their things. Alive for future. I'm done videos. with that. That's but yeah, cool. apparently there's going to be a definitive winner. That's, that's what I'm excited It's about. not in the dark universe. The next entry into the dark universe is called The Bride of Frankenstein. Oh, fuck off. Oh, who, who fucking cares? Who's that? Uh, Based off of bride. Victor Frankenstein, the it's one with Daniel Radcliffe that sucked dick. What? It's just weird Didn't well. they already do a Frankenstein movie in that universe with Daniel Radcliffe and it sucked? No, that that was something totally different. Uh, this is oh. that was not the dark universe, Andrew. The dark universe didn't exist until the mummy. God damn. Good lord. I I mean I'm stoked now for the King Kong versus Godzilla thing. Yeah, it's it, like that sounds super cool. Those versus movies always annoy me because no one ever there's like no consequences. They always become friends so that the studios can retain yeah. any future profit or whatever possibilities yeah so it's nice it's i don't know well I, I hope they don't still pussy out and make uh like the definitive winner uh I, I, I mean would anyone really care if they just killed king kong and then in the next movie said hey he's alive again magic yeah i wouldn't mm, care no, I, don't well, think so I hope i hope actually one of them dies and they don't just like knock one of them out and count the other one as the winner or whatever <laughs> <laughs> <I> hope... <laughs> jackson you don't know how to make Godzilla money do you by the bell yeah no well, the executives will laugh at you and be like, no, they, they both need to live and spawn as many movies as possible. That's not true Trust at all. Me. A lot of the executives have integrity, which is why the yeah. Dark Universe exists like, in the first like place. you've never been to Hollywood, Andrew. Yeah, for real. Okay, I have been to Hollywood. I've seen those executives close up, and let me tell you, when you look at them real, real close up with no distance between you two, oh you can God. see how clean shaven they are. Because they oh, probably I use... about to just end that sentence for you. Dollar Shave Club. Damn it. That's right. The smarter choice that you fans out there all know and love, Dollar Shave Club, is a great shave at a great price, conveniently delivered right to your, to your door. Door. Thank you, Jackson. Keep it going. No, you go. <laughs> okay. Always. All right. So for a limited time, <laughs> for a limited time, folks, Dollar Shave Club, you all know them as the quality razor delivery service. For a limited time, new members get their first month. Of the executive razor, I believe, as I said before, executive tip-top highest quality razor with a tube of Dr. Carver's shave butter for only $5 with free shipping. That is a $15 value for only five actual real-world dollars. And then after your first month, replacement cartridges will ship automatically at the regular price. There's no hidden fees, no commitments you can cancel anytime you like. Kaya is a man who suffers from hair... Tell us no. how to get this off. He suffers from hair, god damn it. Don't you wish you could just be hairless? Well, the only hair I can cut is on my face because my chest there is pretty impervious to anything. <laughs> it's like a body armor. I don't even know what's underneath this. I could be ripped like a Greek god. But that's besides the point. I like to shave my face. I like to be clean shaven and Dollar Shave Club. They're razors. I tried them. Beautiful. Shave nicely. If you're like me, you may be preferring the two blade uh, variation and those cost even less so after your first month you could be getting razors to your door for three bucks a month it's crazy. I mean, you can literally just sign up for it and forget about it yeah. you can change how frequently they deliver maybe you're like me where your facial hair doesn't necessarily overgrow your face every single day so you might not need as many razors you can tell them hey just send me razors every other month so then it's pretty much just a buck and a half for you a month cheap it's affordable it's nice it's just it's 
it's razors to your door. It's easy. It's an easy decision. It's convenient. We all love being lazy. Be lazy. Dollarshaveclub.com slash official. Get your razor. You still have to do the shaving, but, you know, with the carver's butter and all, it's good. It's also the only way to fend off alien invasions, I hear. So, dollarshaveclub.com oh, slash official. You said the carver's butter? Because, you know, the carver's butter... Dr. Carver's well, yeah, butter. you do get the carver's yes. butter, which is great. Like, that's fantastic. But did you also know that you get an awesome weighty handle and a full cassette of four cartridges on your first month? Well, that's what you use to shave and first weigh in on your boxing match against the hair. And then, yes, you shave. Exactly. The point of this is, it's an amazing value. <laughs> Sign up for it. Dollarshaveclub.com slash official. So speaking of the dark universe, how <laughs> dumb is that name, right? We talked about oh, that it's... like three times, but how dumb is that name, right? <laughs> Here comes the fourth. Yeah, it's fun. Darkness. All right, Charlie. You don't dark. think dark is cool. Charlie, all huh? right, get, let's, I got a challenge for you then. Give me right now a cinematic universe that hasn't been done that you would love to see. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Lego. They have Jackson, that. That's already happening. Yeah, they have it's that. happening right now. Oh, yeah. I got my wish. Yeah, that was quick. Yeah. Wishes I come... wish for unlimited money. Wish... <laughs> Wishes come true on the official podcast. No. Tell tell your friends. Uh, but Does yeah, Jackson... I have cancer. No, I, I mean one that people haven't even considered. One that you would really want to see. Mm. Pedophile superhero. <laughs> <laughs> There's something never no one will ever consider there. I win. <laughs> No movie studio is ever gonna green light the that. The Great we'll Diddler. Have the same mustache. <laughs> so, so Kaya, it's the Great Diddler and his sidekick, Vulnerable Boy. <laughs> wow, yeah, pretty much. One, one hell of a universe that'd be. Uncle Wigglefinger and the boys back in town. The we need to hunter. save the little boys so we can fuck them. They just creep out all the bad guys and win. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. There are no heroes. The bad guy. They turn the bad guys good. Like, the Joker will look at him and be like, dude, I'm evil, but not like this, man. Someone called CP, uh, CPS, yeah. Uh, <laughs> come on. God damn. Different universes, though. Um... I know yeah, the, the Conjuring, uh, the, the whole Conjuring. Yeah, they've got a universe now. Yeah, they're like, they've kind of developed their own little horror universe, which I really respect. It's not bad either. It's like not, no, it's the, all, it's the connections, the connections aren't What's like all, overwhelming what else is or in your face or anything like that. The Conjuring uh, one and two, Annabelle. Annabelle one and two, but Annabelle as well as uh, the Nun, which is coming out next year. Isn't yeah, it? that wasn't a question. I know. What would you I, know. I, yeah. I was just, I was just spitballing. Um, I guess I'd have like a like a player unknowns cinematic universe, and it's all just kind of really sad situations that he never lets go of. It'd be more like a like a drama <laughs> than anything. At this point, it seems like you I can't like let that. go of it. Yeah, really. You bring him up literally every stream, every podcast, every because everything it's now. funny. I just, I don't, man, it's it's funny. I, I don't think I've had less respect for a game developer in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. And when someone is offended, you double down. You don't let go of that. No, it's not even that. It's Religious. not even that he was offended. It's just the levels he went to. It's like I, I don't think he's ever been kicked in the chest through a pane of glass. That sounds so cool. Like if that. It did happen, like though. that's some shit I'd make up as a kid if someone called me out on a lie or like called me out for being you know weird or something. I'd make up this elaborate, stupid story that makes me sound cool and kind yeah. of elicit no, sympathy. It, it just sounds like an exaggeration yeah. show. Like if you push me down and I fell down, and I say like oh man you know he beat me over the head with a baseball bat that had like nails in it and then i fell face first into glass but i didn't cry and that's why i don't like pool noodles. i didn't cry i just stood up and i said sir you're embarrassing yourself enjoy the band and everyone around me clapped everyone don't. clapped everyone in the whole place my life was significantly better before memes and then they started happening and now I've been depressed ever since i can't go anywhere on fucking youtube without the, those crash bandicoot woe memes yeah. Uh, you know what upsets me really hard jackson for real i could probably get instantaneously really popular overnight by making the most trash horrible pandering meme bullshit videos and cranking them out every 20 minutes andrew and and make me some money make that a, let's make that a challenge here the official challenge how far would andrew's channel grow if he just pumped out meme trash do it yeah, I really. We'll see. You got to no, get. Really, you got to get to one hundred thousand followers within the next month. Oh, I really geez, don't babe. want to. You've got to. It's the um, official contract. I've been considering that. I've the challenge. Accept the challenge, I Andrew. I I think you're overplaying it. Then it then, Just there be, needs to be something in it for him, though. Well, I mean, the channel growth. I think that's a good enough reward. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the the point 
I don't think it's as easy as you make it sound. Memes, I, everyone's pumping them out. I think it's absolutely as easy as I make it sound. How many dime a dozen meme channels pop up every, like, o- literally overnight when there's a brand new spanking meme? And then how? Yeah, but how, someone's gonna create those. And then they get like, literally a million them. subs and about like seven hundred thousand views per video that they release daily. I'd like to wait. Name. I will link you three examples right now. I can think of them off the top of my head. Well, how about you say them instead of link them for the? For I the don't listeners. know the names. I would have to look them up through their memes, right, but well, I know no, who I'm thinking a... of. You know the guys who did the "We Are Number One" shit, where every time it was yeah. like "We Are Number One," but it zooms in on the left guy. Ha <laughs> ha! They got literally like one million views per video, and they put them out every single day. Okay, so what what's going to be yeah. your groundbreaker? Well, right yeah. now it's whoa, but I'd wait for the next trend, and then I'd just crank out literally every day something based on it. I'd be like, here's an anime opening, but with this dubbed in. Here's a cartoon opening, but this dubbed in. You like Rick and Morty? Here's that episode, but I replace every time they say squanch with this meme. Like, it's not hard. It's really not hard. And well, you do it. it. I don't do it. want to. The last one sounds doable. Too bad. You, you seem like you're pussying out. Do it. No, I'd rather do other shit. No, do it. I don't want to. When people say something's shit. easy, you have to prove it. Prove how easy exactly. it is by doing it yourself. Charlie, breathing is easy. Do I have to prove it? Yes. That's that. that now I don't know. That's a horrendous uh, comparison to draw. <laughs> Perhaps one of the worst you could have made in the situation. I mean, Charlie, I could bring your channel into this. What would? Oh! I'm, I'm dead serious. I could. There is a reason that your videos on the emoji movies Ouch. and with the shorter, simpler titles get way more views than your other stuff. What do you mean? Fight, fight, what do you fight. Mean? Uh, your, so your emoji video has, what, a, a million views now? Uh, no. Yeah, the emoji movie video? It doesn't. 700. How much is, yeah, 700. How much does your other stuff have? I don't know. I don't keep track. Exactly. Wait. That that wasn't a meme video though. That, that just capitalized the emoji, on the movie, emoji movie when it movie came out, out wasn't. What do you yeah, mean exactly. capital? I saw the fucking movie and I. If you what, if no, you, you follow know I mean. meme it, topics I mean, or the buzz views, topics, that's the cause of the views. Yeah, exactly. If you follow memes or buzz out. topics, you will instantly get content. Period. Well, then you do it. You what? bring out an emoji that's movie. That's such a horrible comparison. It's not like I went out of my way to 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 do anything with the emoji movie. I saw the fucking movie. Exactly, but you did the emoji movie. You literally only saw it because you knew it was that a meme too. Movie. I've seen yes. every new movie. I saw Hitman's Bodyguard, literal a movie no one has ever heard of. I see yeah. every no, single I, new movie. I agree. It's. It I mean, Charlie, I'll I'll movie. give you. You you were hyped for it. Though. Charlie, oh, I, I, I will concede I love bad the movies. fact that you watched it not because of the meme, but the fact of the matter is that video didn't get any attention because it was special or any different than your the others. It literally only got attention because it was about the emoji movie, which was trending at the time. I, what is your argument here? It it only got popular because it was a popular movie. Well, no shit. Yeah, so if you follow trends or memes, <laughs> you will instantly get more views and so all what, that So do you shit. make a conscious decision to never talk about anything popular by accident or <laughs> do anything on a popular game? What is your point? My point is that it upsets me that you can just follow trends. It upsets and get you popular. that you can't just play a uh, uh, or do something on an obscure MetroCon in Tampa and have it blow up. It what I don't see the logic. It upsets me that if you do something obscure, no matter how much effort you put into it, usually you're not going to And that's a lie, too. Like, look at games like uh, Happy Wheels. That was an obscure game at one point, and then it became a huge thing just from right. people playing now, an obscure Now, how, how many hundreds of games that are exactly like it got popular? That well, came before it all comes it even. down to luck. Yeah, you exactly! Put, that's my point! Effort. What do you mean? You Your whole point was that these big it, things, though. It's you, luck and virality. What did you it's do? not quality. <laughs> Quality like support. Brooklyn and okay. Sheets. <laughs> <laughs> you can now order at Brooklyn and dot com. The promo code official. So if you want quality, not meme stuff, they don't have like Pepe the Frog or whatever Crash Bandicoot on their well, sheets. That's a terrorist symbol, apparently. Yeah, and Brooklyn and doesn't have that. They have nice, clean, pristine white sheets. Beautiful white sheet. Don't cut holes in them. Don't wear them. They're beautiful sheets. And, Jackson, take it away. Tell us about the sheets. You've been sleeping in them for a while like a mummy now. Oh, dude, the sheets are just so fucking comfortable. You don't understand how, like, how much of a difference good sheets make. Like, if you've lived your whole life sleeping in bad sheets, you're kind of accustomed to that. But once you slip into Brooklyn and sheets, it's just, there's no feeling like it. It's like popping your first cherry or something like that. It's just amazing. 
It's like a nice warm. Your first cherry as opposed to the sixth. Do you sixth? pop cherries in your sheets, Jackson? That's the only place to pop them. Ooh. It's like a nice warm <laughs> hug from mom. Ugh. Aww. That's not what I th- mm. want to think about when I'm popping cherries. Uh, you don't go, mom. <laughs> oh, mom, stop it. So brooklinen.com has an exclusive offer just for our listeners, guys. They can get $20 off and free shipping when they use promo code OFFICIAL at brooklinen.com on their orders. You heard that right. They're official sheets. Mm-hmm. Get your nice, clean, official sheet. You don't want dirty sheets. Let me tell you something. There's nothing more bigger than, of a turnoff than someone's Ew. dirty, disgusting sheets in bed if you're like at their place. Even if you're not getting lady, it's, it's disgusting even for your friends. Like You might be saying, hey, just sit down on the bed, dude. And your friend will be like, no, it's all yellow yeah, and gunky. What the fuck did the you bed. do in this bed? Jackson, how long have you had the sheets? How long have you uh, had about, them? About, uh, I think about a month now. Okay, so that's like 30, 31 days. Nothing gets by you. Yeah, the thing is, Brooke is. Linen, <laughs> Brooke Linen offers a risk-free <laughs> satisfaction 60-night guarantee. And Jackson, having been th- halfway through that allotted amount, do you have any desire to return those sheets? Not at all. So we... I'm, I can't wait to pop more cherries on this. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, these, these sheets are honestly great. I am actually endorsing them. They're, they're fantastic sheets. As we're actually endorsing all our sponsors. Exactly. No, I know, I mean, but I just... Go I, to I, don't want to stress, com. I want to stress how much I like these fucking sheets. I love them too. They're Brooklinen. Brooklinen.com. Promo code official. Get that stuff. $20 these off and free shipping ever. with that fucking promo code. Best sheets ever. We'll pop some cherries on it. Have fun. It's on us. They are the... <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, if, if you ask real nicely, we'll consider buying the whole thing. Just for you. The offer's on us. The offer is on us. They're the best sheets Jackson. ever. Jackson paid for all of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sponsoring them. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move... It's a bulk sale. Let's move on to a topic that makes me look less like a resounding douche. Wait, no, what were we talking about before? There was something... <sighs> you were furiously fighting and Charlie was getting upset. Oh no, upset. I wasn't upset, I just don't get his point. Like, like, the point was, memeing stuff is easy. And yeah, while making meme stuff is easy, getting it to take off is different. And your example was on a, a popular movie that's popular because it's bad. I, it's, so it's just, I, there's no equivalence. It, it, yes, it that's got, where my point is. I disagree that getting it to take off is hard. I then don't do think it, it is at all. Then prove it yourself. Prove it. I don't want to... I don't want to fucking just waste days making that shit. You I just said how easy it is it. to make it. Like you can pump it out every five minutes. It wouldn't take you days, according from I your know. according to your estimates here. He knows. <laughs> Do it then. Fine. Hey, all right. Thank well, you. You're here first, guys. There. He signed the contract. But I don't. I'm not putting it on my channel. Then all right, I'll make a okay. new channel. That's even better. Yeah, that's sh- even better. That'll show us exactly channel. how easy it is. It's, it's just I've been thinking about that too not the meme stuff Andrew but like the Elsa shitty animation stuff I feel like god maybe I should give that a try with like popular characters let's do like PewDiePie fighting whatever some pro player whatever look I mean I, you're, there's a slight misinterpretation of my argument here it's, I'm not saying that it's an instant way to success I'm saying that it's a very easy and very much more attainable way for a success than doing anything else. Your whole argument yeah, from the get go was how that's easy that's it is and how much your channel would grow yes. if you did meme stuff. Yes, comparative to everything else, I believe <laughs> that if you sit down and go, I want to make a viral and popular YouTube channel, your number one by a far margin way of doing it is meme content. Oh, well, yes. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm no, trying to no, say. I might not be it, expressing it right, but it's that's a what mindless I'm argument, to say. and you're roping like popular stuff into memes. Well, I, I think it kind of goes with it. That's what meme means, though. Well, I know, but when you think of meme on the internet, it doesn't exactly have the same definition it does in literature. Meme now is more like, pe- you know, Pepe the Frog. Okay. Like a character. Well, no, meme is memeology. It's just something that memeology, replicates itself and becomes very... Memes. It's a real thing. Is it really? It's something that just becomes very yeah. popular, and, and yeah. that's what memes and popular things are. That's why the emoji movie, even if it's bad, it's still a meme. Maybe I'm just a cynical old shit and hate everything now. But... Well, no, you're 100% right about the whole success on YouTube thing. I mean, they're yeah. uh, they are actively trying to make that the YouTube business. Mm-hmm. is Fudging their algorithms so all the Elsa stuff gets above yeah. this beautiful podcast, which is the best on the planet. It's weird. Yeah. I... 
I actually want to give a big thank you to all the mm. iTunes fucking rabble fans because we breach the top 200 on there sometimes, and that blows my goddamn mind. Hell yeah. Shout out to everyone who gives us reviews on iTunes. Yeah. Thank you. Fuck me. We, so, we were also in the remember top. Remember that iTunes is a thing. We were in the top 10 on uh, Spotify as well. Fuck. I don't even. God damn. Like, so we're, we're all mostly Jeez. big YouTube and Twitch <clears> people. <throat> Those are in terms of, I guess. I, they're not social media. Whatever you call like platforms of content. Yeah, that's platforms. Where we, yeah, that's where we sit most of the time. So for any of you people yeah. who take us this podcast in on other places, just a big sloppy kiss to you because that is astounding how mm-hmm. high we've gone on those without really focusing on Thank those platforms. You. Really, anyone yeah. that watches this show. <laughs> True. <laughs> that too, True. but extra going out of your way to no i'm not gonna watch this on youtube i want it on itunes yeah. like grandpa yeah. Yeah. first my condolences and then my thanks for those <laughs> thanks, listening grandpa. on itunes <laughs> yeah. thank you oh we have the shout outs right oh, fuck yeah. we do well, before, it's time. before before we do that can i just give a massive shout out to uh Did my heroes pay? over at, over at frontier who have just announced jurassic world evolution a new uh, park building game in the vein of Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, which is one of my favorite games of all time. That so I'm really excited. Rad. I think you should hold off until they show some gameplay. They did. Well, they showed a CGI trailer. Yeah, no, there was, there was uh, some gameplay. So in other words, they didn't show us anything. Is it good? No, they didn't show gameplay, but I, I've got enough trust in Frontier from uh, their previous stuff. Ooh. What did they, what if, Don't trust what have they made so far? Uh, Planet Coaster, Roller oh. Coaster Tycoon 3. Oh, you had me until that uh, last one. Roller Coaster I mean, Tycoon 3 is good. Horrible, it's yeah. okay. I thought it was good. It's a, it's a it's an entirely it's... different game to Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, so I can respect that's it. That's the problem. Well, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that you was go, the, you go the most people Roller that's what... Tycoon 2. Well, I play it every year. I love that game to death. I mean, uh, I'll take my Tycoon shout out then and shout out Parkitect, which is Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. I just basically, to talk about uh, Jurassic Park. It's a, Roll- I mean, they, it could be good though, because Planet Coaster was good. So I'm, I'm no, uh, yeah, no, definitely. I think I think this, no. I think this game would better suit a 3D, you know, a 3D look anyway, since you're dealing with animals and such. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Please sponsor us, Frontier, and yeah, send whoever's me, making architect. Send me codes, please. <laughs> so should we should we do, talk about one more thing though? Because like this was just me whining for a good bulk of this episode. No, <laughs> no this no, was we beautiful. Can do, we can do shoutouts. What the? All right, yeah. I'm, we can just I'm ready for the. I'm ready for the comments. Uh, just tell me though, then in secret, what what did you want to say? No, I don't know. I just I'm I, I'm afraid that this episode oh, might oh, cast okay. me in a bad no. light. I don't. I no. didn't want it to seem like I'm just bitching about things. No, no not once we take out the first ten minutes of you bullying me. <laughs> That's staying in. I'm doubling that. Oh yeah, if we're, no. we're looping it and then reversing it. Doubling the gain. <laughs> All right, let's just let's just yeah, move the clip. shoutouts then, I guess. Yep, so this is the part of the podcast the where spirit. we take our patrons shout outs if they're at the right tier at that uh, that level. They send us a nice little message that they want us to read out, so we're gonna do that now. That's this time. Let's have some fun with it. God, I gotta piss. Yeah, I also have to make the PP. Uh so the first one comes from, hold on, I have to I have to fart real quick. The first, the first one comes from Did you fart with your mouth? Well no, like I had <laughs> you to invert I had to lean forward. <laughs> Because I'm, he had, at, to get the, he, he had to get did, his anus in the mud. Did Tiana squeeze you? Like, what happened? Well, I, I've been having like a lot of gas recently, and I hate uh, farting on a flat ooh. surface because it feels like I just shit myself. For oh, it's just yeah. the worst. So I always the warm air pancake. Oh, it's absolute worst. It's like hot breath from like a giant, but underneath me, it's yeah. the worst. So yeah, I scooted forward. The first one comes from it. Woodblock, and his message says, "Don't believe in yourselves." Believe in the me who believes in you. Thank Thanks, you Woodblock. Thanks, Woodblock. Thanks, reference. Thanks, Woodblock. I love Gurnlogan. You're my, fa- you're my favorite so Minecraft block. <laughs> who is wants- it really? Is Continuing Woodblock on. really your favorite? I think he's lying. I think so. It's He's never even... I don't know. I, I, don't, like, I don't think... I, I like yeah. sand. You don't even play Minecraft, do you? No. You think it's a cheap ripoff off of Legos. <laughs> you're ideologically opposed to it. I think it's a cheap ripoff of Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. <laughs> Ouch. All right, next one. Who wants to read this one? I'm going to read it. All right, this one's from Red, who says, Hey, I just wanted to give a shout out to my cousin Ricky, aka Chewbacca, with a big fuck you. Also, thanks for all the episodes you've put out. It's always a big excitement to see what's next. You guys are awesome. Aww. Yeah, fuck you, Ricky. Yeah, fuck, yeah, fuck you, Ricky. Fuck Chewbacca. 
Fuck Chewbacca. Yeah. Fuck that guy. Yeah, he's my who, least favorite Star Wars. Fuck that guy in the costume, but, the guy with the curly hair. Fuck him. You're the worst part of those movies, Ricky. Yeah. Thanks right, for the kind next, words. This next one is from <laughs> uh, Buttery Oranges. And it says, if you guys had dicks for pickles, would you choose a half sour, full sour, or dill? Half sour. I, I would, um, I, I would I fucking kill myself. Well, I... You had dicks or pickles? I don't get the question. Like a jar full of pickled yeah, dicks? Like, yeah, like, <laughs> I would choose full sour dicks, because I don't want to eat them anyway. Yeah, it's what? dill. I think he meant if we had pickles for dicks. I think so, too. Yeah. <laughs> but no, he's asking if... if wait, if you guys... Yeah, if we had dicks <laughs> for pickles. So if I was going to my fridge for a nice tall jar of pickles, <laughs> and I pulled out my dicks in the jar, what kind of dicks would I want? Yeah, well, no, maybe he's yeah. right. Maybe he's still right. What's, what's dill, though? Is that, like, extra sour? You remember dill pickles from the Rugrats? It's his dick. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll take that. It's a small one, at least. It'll go down easier. <laughs> Can I, I, like, I, like, I like the next patron's name as well. Yeah, this is a hard one. This one comes from Dylan Ludk. The message is, good luck pronouncing my last name. Shout out to Harrison. I still don't know the rules, but I, I really, really want to say the N-word. <laughs> Charlie, just say it. Just say it once. No. The the last name is Lutke. Lutke. He said it. Yeah. Charlie, you said it. You said no. Lutke, it's German. The N word. No. Oh, I nailed it. Oof. Nailed it. That's another one. I want to roll. He's, he's <laughs> full of N words. Yeah. Can't stop. <laughs> right, who's got the next one? Because Alex's mic isn't working. It says Kyle. Not oh, me. Okay. This one's from Ash because Alex is. I don't know, he passed out like 10 minutes ago. Can I please get a shout out to the cabbage guy from Avatar? Hell, yes, thank you, finally, someone who actually knows Avatar. You know the one who always gets his shit wrecked by the Avatar, but then I think in the Korra show it was mentioned that he owned like Cabbage Corp or something? Yes, that's true. Like, damn dude, you go. I think in an alternate timeline, Cabbage Corp would have made like cabbage cards, which would be like dual monsters from Yu-Gi-Oh, but everything is cabbage themed and the cabbage guy would be like that world's Kaiba. You don't have to read all this, just shout out the cabbage guy from me, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> well, a little late. At the beginning. Ash, I'm gonna be honest, you have used your money in the best way out of all the shout outs so far. I enjoyed that. Oh. Yeah, I, I like the cabbage guy, and yes, he, I, I think Ankara actually has a monument to himself. I'm oh, not sure, like a nice. statue, but yeah, not he's, entirely he's sure. Places. He does have Cabbage Corp, though. So, the next one is from Chaz Thundercock. Oh. I suspect he might be a Chad as well. Message. I believe it was a few episodes ago when Charlie miserably failed to tell a rhyming version of the famous Boardwalk Burgers joke. So here I am to prove to him how pathetic his rhyming skills are. Here goes nothing. I was driving in my car down the I-4 with my beautiful girlfriend, whom I was share- Who I- What? <laughs> His his pantameter's a little can, off. Don't feel intimidated. You you picked the worst person to read this. <laughs> I I was driving down no, in my car. No, no in doubt. The, I four with my what beautiful girlfriend. I don't know. I I don't know what is happening to my brain. Whom I was starting to bore. I looked to my left and I saw a sign. The added display just blew my mind. It was for board, Boardwalk Burgers, a city burger joint. When people saw the sign, they'd stare and they'd point. On the foreman, some homeless people were cooking patties. I imagined the restaurant was full of fatties. <laughs> so with my quick wit, I sped out a great pun. Boardwalk burgers, more like board burgers. Because those burgers aren't having any fun. Suck it, Charlie, I'm better than yeah, you. Yeah, no, but you also picked the worst yeah. avatar to conduct your revenge, so I'm sorry. Yeah. And this was basically like having some retards mods. Yeah. Yeah. Just, there you go. <laughs> Have the that. I'm sorry, Chaz. He had, he had time to prepare that. I was on the spot. Don't pick me for long, long segments, especially at a. I guess it wasn't your fault. You couldn't have known that we're recording four hours today. But Chaz is gonna get my highest grade on rhyming ever. A C minus. <laughs> what do I get for my great eight mile performance? You have to see me after class. <laughs> I think I have to see a neurologist. <laughs> the next one comes from Matthew Precious Laprise. Hello, gentlemen. First, how are you doing? Second, I was wondering if you've ever gotten so inebriated that you'd ordered silly things in the interwebs. <sighs> Go, Jackson. Ugh. I'm good. But the second point, I'm bad. 
<laughs> yeah, he's very I, bad. I do that a lot. <laughs> I'm a bad boy. Jackson orders uh, shit from the I, interwebs I, a lot. Yeah, I do. And I don't even have to be inebriated. Yeah, uh, you literally just wake up in the middle of the night to order VR headsets. I do a lot of pointless game stuff. Like, if I'm playing Counter-Strike, I'll order crates and be like, I want skins! Or shit. Mm. That happens to me a mm. lot when I'm drunk. Yeah. I, 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 I don't drink, but the only thing I ever do is I go on Steam and I, if something is on sale, I'll buy it, even though I know I won't be playing it for another 30 fucking years or ever, really. Yeah. But I've been good about it recently. I haven't bought any game. Yeah, I don't buy shit when I'm drunk. Mm-hmm. The next one... The, yeah. the next one comes from Bayonets for days, and they say, Welcome to Carson's fur and purr. You give him. He's got him. I mean, yeah, I, if it's a reference, I'm not getting it. Yeah, I'm not getting it. And maybe Minecraft? I don't know. Yeah, oh, uh, right. Ah, yeah, Dr. Carson's shaving butter, yes. <laughs> The next one comes comes from Don <laughs> McKinney. How many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Pop? Well, the world does know because it's an average of 252 to 253 licks. I, Charlie, will now Google this fact to check its accuracy. Andrew, can you Google that for me? Yeah, sure, I'm on it. Thanks. He types faster. Let's see. <laughs> All right. These are getting meta <laughs> that now. That is very meta. Uh... Oh god, I have to piss so much. This badly. fucking webs these Tootsie motherfuckers are so egregious with their count they actually put it on their own website. They used a licking machine modeled after a human tongue, and it took an average of three hundred sixty-four licks to get Ooh. to the center. However, um the when tested by actual volunteers, it took an average of two hundred fifty two licks. Uh, could uh could uh is is that tongue machine rentable? <laughs> Well, if you watch Howard Stern, <laughs> I I, have you ever seen Howard Stern the tongue chainsaw? No. That's my favorite. Yeah, no. So they have they have a sex toy. It's literally a chainsaw with like twelve tongues instead of a blade, and it just spins around, and it's the funniest shit to see in action. I love it. That sounds fucking awesome. This next one comes from an Alaskan bullworm. Did you know there are two AIMs in Antarctica? Hey, at, no, back what up. ATM? Back oh, up. ATMs. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. I was I was wondering why AIM was even still around. And then, boom, dropping some B-14 truth bombs on you guys. Well, I didn't know about the AIMs or the ATMs. I didn't think there were even people in it. And Scientists. Well, of course there are. Yeah. Yeah. They got to settle their bets somehow. Wait, well, yeah, why would they need money? There's no well, no, what, they always bet each other how many ATMs there are, and they have to pay out somehow. You know what? I'm, I'm calling bullshit on this fact. This guy's gambling. Depth. All right, I'll look on tootsieroll.com and see what the actual <laughs> number is. Can you look up on steelbladder.com and I'll order me one? Yeah, this is this is becoming. I'm about to leak. Jesus Christ! Well, go take a piss while I look up this fact. Go take a piss and come back. No, no. Does someone read the next one? Oh Jesus! I'll read it. This one comes from Alcanda. Fill in the blank. Blood for the blood god. Skulls for the. Skull God. I guess. Or for the Blood God. Maybe uh, every... Riddle. Pay, pay. Yeah. yeah, he's a multifaceted individual. Yeah. He likes blood and skulls. That's simple. Yeah. Butt and skulls? Blood and skulls. <laughs> oh. And butt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he likes... Yeah, anything. The no, next one comes... Next one. Oh. You, you, you got it? No, it's each uh, each host reads okay. out their own part. Yeah. This one comes from, Matthew Carson. comes from Matthew Carson, and we're each going to read one. Oh, man, it looks like he just has some very sweet things to say. Big, He's been a fan since 2009, going through tough... Read it verbatim, you dick. Okay, yeah. well, it sounds weird saying it verbatim there. Do it. <laughs> it <laughs> makes me it. so... Do it. Oh. Do it. Oh. Charlie... Read it. Charlie, I'm about to piss myself off. Charlie, you. been a big fan of yours since 2009 when I was going through some tough time waiting for your next video was one of the only things that kept me going. So thank you. Also, can you give a shout out to my little brother, Josh, and my little sister, Megan? They are also big fans. Aww. You are the most popular person in their fifth grade class, dude. Well, I appreciate the kind words, Matthew, and shout outs to Josh and Megan. Aww. That's so that cute. That is super cute. And the next one's for Jackson from Matthew. 
Jackson is a fellow Australian. You're probably the person I can relate to the most on the podcast. Your one-liners always crack me up. However, I am disappointed that you feel remorse for killing cane toads. Those mu- those fuckers deserve to die. <laughs> they kill more native wildlife in Australia than, bo- than, than both feral cats and feral dogs combined. Also, we have a seven-foot kangaroo that lives in the forest behind our house, and his nutsack is so big, <laughs> it fucking drags on the ground under him. Just thought you'd like to know. I'm, I'm always interested in knowing about that's kangaroo's awesome. nutsacks. That doesn't oh, sound like a kangaroo. You, I think that's a man. <laughs> it's just a homeless man. <laughs> yeah. no, I can't laugh. I'm pissing I, It hurts. I'm literally pinching my dick. I have to hold it. <laughs> Go, Andrew. Andrew, it's comforting to know that I'm not the only one who has a heap of bad dating stories. I once went out with this girl who was nice and not bad looking, but when she kissed, my chin would pretty much be in her mouth. Needless to say, that one ended quickly. Keep up the great work. That sounds like a bonus to me if yeah, I were wait, dating that a, woman. Was she a boa constrictor or something? Yeah. Is the, like her mouth open super wide? Is that what it's saying? Well, how is he kissing? Even if she's <laughs> short, you look down to kiss. Did he just like jut forward and slam her in the mouth? Crimson chin style, yeah. <laughs> you don't know their heights. Don't introduce variables we don't know anything Fair about. Enough. Matthew says, Kaya, although I don't always agree on some things you dislike, but nine out of ten times I agree with you, especially when it comes to Bill Nye and Neil. Yeah, fuck him. <laughs> Matthew goes on to say, I was first introduced to you through Charlie's channel and I and love all the vids you do with them. Keep hating, mate. It's always entertaining to hear your opinion on everything. Keep up the great work and look forward to the next podcast. Thank you. Finally, a guy with a good palate and taste in hate. <laughs> this next one's from Taboy Jeeb, grandson of Peef Spogar. Spogdar. Mes- it's Peef Spogdar's grandson, Peef, you goddamn truck. Spogdar. And his message is... It's a, it's, yeah, a little, yeah, it's, it's a little face it's a little, emoticon. Little face. I don't know how to express that with noise. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a mischievous face. I, like, I'd oh. expect nothing less from yeah. the illustrious Peef Spogdar. Uh, that's his grandson, you fuck. Well, it's still in his lineage of Taboy Spogdar. Jeeb. You're up, Kaya. These sound like Star Wars names. Okay, <laughs> this is from Fish. Difficult name to pronounce. I repeat, Fish. I don't really have anything special or funny to say. I just want to support the podcast however I can. I love you guys, so keep just doing what you're doing. I'll think of something for next month. Thank you, Appreciate Fish. Appreciate it, Thank Fish. Thank you, Fish. Love you, Fish. Thanks. Yeah, love you. <laughs> all. This says all. Who wants to read this one? Oh, wait. Okay, I'll read it. Brandon Galatro says... Any, if, I guess. Yeah, if you guys had the means and ability to make any movie you want based on a video game, what would be the game and what would be the overall story? Metal Gear Solid, and it's already happening. The, Wait, the really? Yeah, they're making a Metal Gear movie, and I'm really skeptical. Oh, boy. It's probably going to be yeah. awful. Rightfully so. Mine would be Jurassic World Evolution, and it would be a Jurassic Park movie. Just another entry into the franchise. <laughs> it would just be a complete shot-for-shot remake of Jurassic World, but starring Jackson. Oh, Same angle. <laughs> Same everything. <laughs> it's just my face photoshopped over Chris Pratt's. <laughs> exactly. I'm all right with that. I have to pee. I, I, I have to tap out. Just I've got to pee it, so bad. We've got the fan fiction later anyway. Yeah, You're there's not no way it. I was making it through all this. I okay. have to pee. But hang, hang on, oh. Charlie. Charlie, hang on. A- after this one, because tell us your movie idea. Oh, oh right. Uh, based on a video game? Um, I think Psychonauts yeah. could make for a really interesting movie. Mm, yeah, I agree, that actually. That is a good choice. Yeah, I think that'd make... That's just called Inception. But mm-hmm. yeah. I, I think my movie would be based on either the Metroid universe or the uh, fuck. What, what was the game called that's based on Metroid? Not based on it, but the fan game. Uh, oh, Jurassic oh, World time, Evolution. Charlie, hang on. No, 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 no. Axiom Verge. Axiom Verge. Oh. I think that universe would make a good movie. Okay. Yeah, they're back. Pissing time. I mean, I'm, I'm, oh my I'm gonna go piss since I have time now. Have yeah. Oh wait here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, entertain myself. <sighs> leave, leave this unedited in. Just leave it in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, 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 I rape every day. God, that's such a good accent. Oh, thank it's God. A good, it's a good raping accent. It is. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, okay. I made pee pee. Boston <sighs> uh-huh. Alright, we ready? I hope so. Okay. Oh my God, I feel so much better. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Who's got Adams? Wow. I lost my place. Okay. It's uh, Adam Zara. 
This Adam one Jara. is from Adam Jara, and it says, Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. I want to make an official podcast vinyl wrap in the new Need for Speed. <laughs> I was hoping to get the official seal of approval. Love you guys, and I will absolutely approve that. That sounds approved. cool. Hell yeah. I, that sounds really cool. I'm, I'm down for that. It's approved. I don't know what that is. But so, yeah. it's, you don't know what wrapping your car is, Kai? I, I, I mean... Yeah. Just explain it to me because I don't know what uh, if, what it has to do with Need for Speed. And so, stuff. so there's a new thing with cars where instead of painting them and getting custom paint jobs, you can put literally like Christmas present wrap on them, and it's a lot oh. quicker and cheaper and ways to design it, and you can just take it off and it's literally just called wrapping. So apparently, according okay, to this guy, sense. you can do it in the new Need for Speed game. Okay, yeah, I'll do it in real yeah. life. So, oh yeah, ab- absolutely. Yeah. You have There's a challenge. You have our blessing. You can go do that to your you can, heart's yeah. content. You can wrap anything you want. Yes. Hell yeah! Make any fan art. Mm-hmm. All right, someone, someone else next. Jackson. Well, I'm doing the next one after that, so I figured someone else do this. Oh, one. All right, uh, <laughs> fair enough. I'll do it. Uh, so this one comes from John Locke from Lost. Last week, I wake up one random morning and had to and head to the DMV. Just your standard DMV. They have some homeless people slap some licenses on the counter, having a good old time. I pocket my license, feeling a bit taller, and scoot onto the highway. Tune into the official podcast and hear of a man who can make the human Ouroboros. God damn it. I am happy. So clever. I turn to look out the window and see a Boardwalk Burgers sign. Make it official. Sign. And at Zip Recruiter official sign. <laughs> so with my quick wick, I said, Boardwalk Burgers, make it official at ZipRecruiter.com slash official. John Locke, your, uh, your witty uh, Norse mythology like is not lost on me. That's great. Thank you. It's not lost on any of us. I think we all get what human Ouroboros meant. Yeah. I, I think that's a really clever way of what he's trying to say. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I too liked it. Go. All right, this next one comes from Ghost, who says it's hard to know what to say in a shout out section following a comedic podcast. I don't think I could come up with something witty enough to make you all laugh, so I'm going to stick to just speaking from an embarrassingly honest part of my heart. Nothing like a good dose of feelings to sober up the mood, am I right? Anyhow, I feel like it's a safe bet to say that life isn't easy for the majority of people for one reason or another. Everyone's got their own battles to fight big or small they exist for everyone in some form life is difficult for me sometimes for a majority of reasons and it seems like sometimes i just can't catch a break you know some days it's like the sun sets and with it goes my passion for life things get cold and bleak and suddenly all the vicious vicious cyclical thoughts i fight so hard to ignore every day come rushing back with the force of a tsunami but in those moments that i find myself sobbing openly for reasons unbeknownst to even me i can count on you for to be the spark that brings my head back to center. Andrew, your undying enthusiasm to entertain, be it the guests, the audience, the boys, or yourself, and that contagious laugh that could probably cure cancer if bottled. Kaya, your sometimes unexpected brutal honesty, and that soft heart of yours that will quickly peek out for things you really love. I imagine that you would give warm hugs. Charlie, your creative drive and your imagination that could fill up shelves upon shelves in the library, I would never get tired of visiting. And yes, this includes your jokes. Even the classic boardwork burger. Jackson, your sharp wit following periods of your silence that stun us all into laughter and the way you get genuinely excited about your interests, even if Lego has put you in a position of crippling debt. (laughs) (laughs) The four of you have put smiles on my face and a bubbling laughter in my chest when nothing else in the world could even come close. And for that, I thank you from the bottom of my eternally grateful heart. I love you all like family, and I hope you will always have everything you need to chase your dreams and find your satisfa- satisfaction. Keep it kicking, boys. That is honestly the sweetest message. I think it's uh, getting misty out, guys. Yeah. Oh. One of those days, I guess. <laughs> that was super duper sweet. That was very considerate. Yeah, I don't even know what to say. Thank you, Ghost. Yeah, Ghost, Ghost is a super nice person. I've actually uh, spoken to her before. So, yeah, she's really nice. Thank you, Ghost. That's, Thank that you, is Ghost. That is really sweet. Thank you. Appreciate it, Ghost. Luckily, the natural uh, uh, stemming from <laughs> that is the fan fiction from Aaron and Edgar. So here's chapter two from last month. 
So chapter two, after the boys finished their delicious Blue Apron meal, which was free and delivered straight to their door, along with two other meals, Charlie did what he does after every meal. He struggles and climbs into computer chair to check the latest cryptocurrency stocks. However, he starts to slip as his chair is his, as to him as Everest is to us. Charlie was hoping that his friend Andrew would help him up with his big strong man arms, but he eventually prevails. While he stares at his screen, he finds himself looking at the regular stock market. Charlie was petrified by what he saw, however. He saw that the stocks for his beloved Blue Apron were down an astronomical amount, all because of a new service known only as Amazon Fresh. Charlie called over in fear to his compatriots at the dinner table. Guys, hurry. You're going to want to see this. The boys rushed over, stopping only to see if Andrew was okay after hitting his head on the doorframe. <laughs> oh, God. What about my goddamn money truck, yelled Jackson. Enough about the money truck. If we don't do something, we aren't going to have any more delicious meals delivered straight to our respective doors. With all the ingredients, no less. Kai replied. Kai then rushes into Charlie's kitchen and grabs a fork. He comes back in, and the rest of the crew kept asking what he was doing. Kai shoved the fork into the nearest power outlet. They all scream in unison, no, but stop after a second. As they stop, a hole in the wall opens wide, revealing an arsenal of weapons. Charlie asks, Kaya, why the fuck is there a, is this array of weapons in my apartment, and how did it get there? Kaya turns nonchalantly and tells him, when the coup happened in, in, oh, in Turkey on Christmas Island, I had these warehouses set up everywhere I might go, just in case. But right now, we've got to save our favorite sponsor, Blue Apron. Kaya later retracts the statement by saying it was just the heat of the moment and that the OP loves all of its sponsors the same amount and don't have any favorites. They love them all. God bless. How appropriate. We literally said that almost yeah. verbatim in this episode. Thank you for adding that line. Chapter 3. Location. Seattle, Washington. Central HQ for Amazon.com Incorporated. Two men stand in a hallway, discussing plans for their newest nefarious service. These men, none other than the owner of Amazon, trademarked himself, Jeff Bezos and former Vice President Dick Cheney. The official, the official boys turn the corner to hear what is said, but they're too late. Kaya then asks, Wait guys, wherever did our good friend Jackson go? It's not safe to be here without proper clearance. I'm sure he's fine, says Charlie reassuringly. He continues, I do wish we could have heard what they were saying there. Jackson then breaks the radio silence, bursting through with, Who said we didn't? He then emerges from an old trash can at the end of the hall. <laughs> they rejoice, but feel the need to know why Jackson wasn't wearing clothes. Um, for stealth, of course. Or something like that. They learn that Amazon plans on slowly going after every single one of the official podcast sponsors. <laughs> All because he wants Amazon to be the sole sponsor of the podcast. The guys decide they need to get to the center of the or operation. Jackson tells them that it was put in a random room, room 9001. We can only get in via the air vents. Oh, sorry, I skipped that. We can only get in via the air vents, though, Jackson reveals. So through the air vents they climb, with Andrew barely able to fit. Charlie tells them that he'll go ahead and test for traps because he's the perfect size and he's not gay. Be careful. <laughs> You're so brave, says Andrew. Charlie pushes forward, nervous. He did He did that to seem brave. <laughs> Andrew was right. A few weeks ago, he said gay jokes always crack him up. Yeah, Jesus that was immediately. It's, it, it, that was a the, good one. The well-timedness of just... Because gay jokes are, to me, the most immature form of humor possible. And just if you well-time it into something, it works perfectly. Just, just the, I'll go, guys. I'm not gay. <laughs> I really like the trap joke. That was nice. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to fissy hit like a little child. Kai has turned to finish this oh, from Edgar. No, this is how it's done. When, when someone does a gay trap joke, you laugh. You don't fucking start a man Every hunt. time. <clears throat> Alright, hang on. Let me pull myself. Yeah, you're in for quite the storytelling <laughs> is here. That your, is that the shot you're gonna pound before you read this? Jesus. He's in a robe by the fire. Okay, yeah, I know. It's gonna be the verbal equivalent of me solving a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> So, this is from Edgar Juan, 
and it continues the story. He did that to seem brave to Andrew, but in reality he thinks, what will I do if there is something up ahead? He, rem he remembers what his dad had said to him as a boy. Perseverance, son, ain't that some shit? Empowered, he calls to his comrades, telling them to come on. When they all get above the room, Kaya asks, how do you get down there? We are up pretty high. Andrew answers sternly, I got this! He unzips his pants, flips himself upside down and proceeds to walk down the wall, attempting to suck his own dick. They stare, awestruck, as their friend shimmies down the wall like, like a spider, landing safely at the bottom. He sets up a ladder from the room and the boys climb down. They look everywhere and find nothing but failed attempts at creating fresh delicious meals delivered right to the people's doors with all the ingredients. <laughs> this is awful. They can't even create something as delicious as a meal from Blue Apron, trademark, exclaims Charlie. As he yells this, the door blasts open, revealing no one else but the mastermind himself, Jeff Bezos. And he was pan and he was yeah. and he was packing some serious heat. He tells our podcast friends that they were not going to have that they're not going to leave alive without denouncing all of their current <laughs> sponsors. No! Never! Not a chance! They all exclaim. Fine then, Bezos says. I didn't want to have to do this. He pulls up the gun and prepares to fire at Jackson, who never found any new clothes to wear, by the way. Quick with his wits, Kaya then jumps in the way of the shot, saying under his breath, Obsidian. He suddenly shifts into a Minecraft block of obsidian, <laughs> taking all the bullets with no damage to him or his friends. What the fuck? <laughs> Jeff Bezos yells. Just as, he, just as confused as anyone sitting in the room, reading the story or hearing it are. Amid all the chaos, Bezos was only looking eye-level. This gave Charlie, who was, who was with... Sorry. Just, Bezos was only looking eye-level. This gave Charlie, who was then well out of his sight because he's I love short... The, I love the uh, clarification. The That's why I was out of his sight. <laughs> The opportunity to advance and deliver a strong blow to Bezos, knocking the air out of him. <laughs> Sorry, the... Knocked the air out of me too. Andrew then decides that the last thing needed to defeat Bezos was to also destroy his ego. How dare he attempt to take away from him Blue Apron. He runs forward and performs a Covey Leonard-esque dunk, a fatal blow. He misses almost entirely, but the thought was what really counted. He falls to the floor. Charlie sees his golden opportunity, he announces, Oh no, I am tripping, and falls right on top. For a second time their <laughs> lips touch, and the taste of arm and hammer toothpaste begins to flood Andrew's mouth. To flood Andrew's now tantalized mouth. After a minute of shock, he begins to grasp at Charlie's <laughs> Gildan trademark brand shirt. I'd like to throw the in two that tongue -tied Edgar lovers. actually asked what toothpaste and shirt I wore. <laughs> So this is all very accurate to what I would be wearing in this situation. Beautiful. The two tongue-tied lovers don't even take a second to see if Jackson or Kaya are staring. In their minds, they are, they are the only two in the room. Nay, the building. Nay, the city. Nay, the country. Nay, the world. Nay, the solar system. The galaxy. The entire Virgil supercluster. It's just them. <laughs> I'd give my entire kitchen of pampered chef TM appliances for this moment. To last one more second, Charlie finally says blissfully. Andrew's staring turns to blushing as he feels Charlie's above-average thundering <laughs> cock poking at him through the Nike brand shorts. Nike. You're gonna need that, Andrew says in a very seductive tone. Suddenly, the door explodes ajar, and the advanced security of Amazon.com points their weapons. They only take a second to wonder why two of the intruders are on top of each other, both with throbbing... Vo Womb brooms. Abruptly. Womb brooms. Womb brooms. Abruptly, from the ceiling repels Andrew's personal friend, Seth Rogen. <laughs> he takes out... <laughs> he takes out security with the same force he did in the Green Hornet and turns to see Charlie and Andrew. Why is critical on top of Markiplier? And then followed it up with his patented laugh. <laughs> do the patented laugh. Someone do it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> the official podcast, Trademark Boys, escaped from the building to horrible news. They may have won the war, but they had lost their good friend Alex. 
Charlie never had to worry about money ever again, however, as Tiana had hit the top of billboards with her hit rap single Banana Bread Bitches featuring Lil Pump. At the funeral, there were tears, but by a tree overlooking the cemetery, there was a man. That man says nothing but, I hate funerals, and disappears into the mist. Jackson catches a glimpse of him as he leaves and smirks. As the figure exits his view, he quietly says to himself, I can't believe that Aaron wrote this whole thing and just sent half of it to Edgar for him to use. Edgar, Edgar did give a lot of input on the gay storyline, though. If he were gay, I would kind of kiss him, but he not, so the end. Yay. <laughs> as all good fan fictions are. The thrilling that conclusion. Oh, that that, that went fantastic. places. It had highs, yeah. it had lows, it had middles. I loved it. Wow. Uh, a fantastic story so from I, start I, to finish. Woo. Thank you. So Edgar. that that man in the cemetery, that, that's Alex, yeah, right? Yeah. He's alive. Yeah. yeah. I knew it. Oh, I thought it was you. No, it's Alex. He hates funerals and then he flicks his cigarette as a puff of explosions go off behind him. Yeah. The whole point is that he survived at the end. Yeah. Jackson, you didn't follow the story? Jesus. No, man. I did. The manga was better, I'll say, but I thought yeah. that was pretty Jackson good. Jackson was thrown off by the word hate. Hear, he thought it was I hear me. they're soft yeah. rebooting it next year with a cinematic universe. <laughs> yeah, but they got Joss Sweden. <laughs> Ooh, the official universe. Ooh. Oh god, what a horrid place. <laughs> right, let's hey. go. Who, Who's got Cole? Who wants this one? I'll take it since you boys did so much reading and Jackson's got the next one. This is from Cole Reighard? Reighard? Reighard. Who's the musician or bands you guys like the most that doesn't fit your personality and you're embarrassed to listen to with people? Pretty much all of my music I'm kind of embarrassed to listen to around people. I listen to, like, metal and stuff, and that's yeah. kind of embarrassing to listen to with people who I, don't like it. I hate having to play music if I'm driving or something because I just know that everyone I'm with is not going to like what I like Yeah. every time. Yeah, I'm not really embarrassed. I mean, I, I listen to stuff. The personalities are always going to be a mismatch. I don't think there's any Kayas out there making music, so... Yeah, but when I'm listening to Ariana Grande, I'm not really embarrassed. Whatever. Yeah. I'm the same as Kyle. Alright, fair. It's not just her All right, ass. Alright, good shit. Alright, next one comes from Andrew. Couldn't think of anything clever to say, so just keep up the good work, guys. This content brings jokes to me every week. Yeah, keep it up, guys. No. Keep, keep Thanks, it up. Andrew. No problem. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, you... I'll tell Alex. <laughs> we'll relay the message. Yeah, to the real All hosts. Right. This one comes from Chandler to the Lego Master, and he says, The official podcast has become a pretty big thing in my life now. Who could have known I'd care about four idiots this month? This will be my last shout-out for a while, because college, but man, do I love you guys. From your favorite patty, <laughs> Chandler. Oh. Good luck in college, Chandler. Chandler. Appreciate yeah, it. I hope, I hope you have a fun time. Keep us updated on it. Good luck. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. No doubt. He's still in the Discord. Yeah. 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 Let me know if your weight loss. This one is straight from Karina, and it says, Hey, Andrew, I've come to terms with the fact that you're the only YouTuber I want to have a three-way with. Can you convince <laughs> Anthony to stop being so stuck up and just take it like a man already? After all, it's not gay if you smoke trees, get on your knees, and hug bees. Oh, I like oh, that. I fucking slam dunked me right there. I really Love like it. that. That's mm. really good. Uh, oh. Thank you. Very much, Karina. Uh, as for that three-way, hit me up with them deets. We'll work something out, I guess. <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> I'll, I'll get my agent to figure out the schedule, and we'll go from there. The next one. I'm his agent. He can do it. <laughs> I'm invited but, that we and, all three, all four of us went invited there. And, and by, nice by my agent, I mean me with a British accent. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can have a six-way. Yeah. yeah. Wait. Yeah, it would be. I think, yeah. I think All so. Right, the next one comes Anthony from John Cohen, who says, Pee is a far more acceptable fetish than shit. I'm obsessed with smelly piss-filled diapers on a girl, but totally disgusted with shit. It's the only problem I have with my diaper fetish. So many times when I thought I struck gold and found a really hot diaper video, it turns out to be scat. Shit ruins everything. I agree. Yeah. 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 yeah, I agree. <laughs> I mean, like, anal, anal's cool and all, but then the instant you remember poopy, it's all bad. Yeah, it's all downhill from the poop. Yeah. How many times have you guys found those hot yeah. diaper videos, but then it's just, like, shit in there? Yeah. Oh, they always bring shit in. Always on my recommendations. I mean, YouTube's algorithm. I don't know what's wrong with it. 
You're up. Right, next one. Yeah. Oh, me? oh, okay. This comes from Bro Robert Ajax. I pose a question, a simple one, however, as simple as it may be, much my... my, my <laughs> what? As simple as it may be, much, my friends and I have debated this for the last three years. Can you move a hole? Yes. You can expand upon the hole. I don't of think course. you can move it. Yeah, yes, you can move it. No, of course you can. You just move whatever. Women have holes, women move. Well, no. Okay, so yes, that is that is an example. And also, say you dig like a hole in the ground, just also move the ground around it, and you have moved the hole. That's a good point. Bam. Yeah. Mm, yeah. But then you've made a bigger hole. I, I was about to say, but then it's kind of just expanding the hole as well. Oh, fuck. That's a good catch. You're right. No, but it's a copy of the hole. It's right, a different hole. It's a different instance. So you not only make a new hole with that, but also wherever you supplant the original hole is where you have moved that hole. So you're doing both at the same time. I guess. So you're gonna so make the hole you could say you there's, hole. there's no way to move a hole without making a new hole. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that's a fair one. Yeah. So it's sort sort of viral. Well, I think I feel like holes could be our biggest nemesis. Well, it depends on what scale. I think. <laughs> Say you have a hole on the planet Earth, and then the Earth starts revolving around the Sun. You've technically moved that hole. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah and true. without Just making like, a new hole. Well, that's a yeah. bad example too, because every hole on Earth is a hole in the Earth. Thus, moving around the Sun is the hole moving. That's not a good example. How how fast are they moving? What's a hole's natural speed? Uh, I guess it's the speed of the earth. Well, I mean, isn't rotating? I can't remember whose law this is, but a but hole Andrew, at rest will stay you, you at rest. You could also, you could take the hole with the earth around it, creating a new hole, but you can then put that ground into another hole, like fill it. Mm. Thus, you wouldn't necessarily create new holes. You would all, always only ever create two holes. So holes can never be created or destroyed. Two holes. Is what you're saying? Oh, it can be. It's they can be destroyed. I don't know. That's what they were trying and to created. do with the hadron collider, but. I don't know the They're results. They're colliding holes. Yeah. They took two copies of the book Holes and slammed them at mock speed. Just lesbian porn. <laughs> let's, let's, all right, you crazy kids. Let's let's turn this car yeah. around with the last one. The entirety of NASA just looking at the screen at the vaginas. <laughs> lights, We're researching. Light speed scissoring, watching the impact. <laughs> I love it. This is from Milo Franklin. And it's how long before we get, how long before we get the official podcast live from your house in the Hollywood Hills? That'd now, be oh, that'd now, be but amazing. for real, do you guys have an idea of when the two of you who ain't from around these here parts gonna come over to these here parts? <laughs> that'd be soon. Well, yeah, it's soon, hopefully, yeah. rather than ideally. Later. Well, Kai is sitting behind me right now as we record. It's a, yeah, I've yeah. been just stroking it's him. Been, his chest it's a real hair. bitch to not have our mics echo into each other, but we try. You just said, pull up a wall. <laughs> Take a load off. Walk down. Brick by brick, we assembled a fine wall in the middle of my bedroom. <laughs> He's a wall connoisseur. Can you move walls? I don't though? know. I'd... Oh, I think well, walls are the yeah, easiest thing I to think, move. Yeah, walls for sure can be moved. That's a universal constant. But can you destroy and create walls? Walls don't yeah. exist without being destroyed or created, yeah. Tear down that wall. All right. yeah. Oh, yeah, it's all of them, isn't it? I believe so. Yep. All right. That, that was a lot of shoutouts this time around. Yeah. Thank you for the shoutouts. <laughs> they were just novels. There weren't many of them. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Uh, well, yes. Thank you for thank your patience. Sorry for those I butchered. But yes, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. R remember to check out Black Mirror. It's recommended by <laughs> all of us. I haven't seen it. Well, it's... It was, yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's ass. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Bye, everybody. We'll see, see Bye, week. good luck, and it's over. Also, if you ever want to see <laughs> us absolutely destroy Battlegrounds, the Twitch is in the description. Yeah. Swear to all, God. Yeah, check us out on Twitch for God. Swear to God, God we'll filthy, the best in the game. Our filthy advertising shilling is in the description. Please look at it at least once. <laughs> we love all our advertisers the same. All Please, right. Give, give me a review code. Please, right, end the episode. Official. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Review code official. It's up. Bye. Use it on Twitch. It's done. I'm... Bye. Bye.
Hi. Hi.